All right, I thought I would do a video that only looks at doing crosses. Because this is really where stringing, doing the main, that's not really stringing a racket, in my opinion, there, because anybody can string mains. So, stringing the crosses. Uh, in some past videos, uh, you hear me talk about if you have one skip, you start under. If you have two skips, you start over. Uh, this racket has two skips, so I would start over. Uh, and the way you would do that, and I'm going to show you some different ways here. So I'd come over here, you go to your first one. And I start over. So that'd go in here, then you'd take the string, bring the other end around, and this string will do the same thing. It'll start over. So you'd have two of them over at the same time. Trust me, it'll work out. But then you'd pull that one through. Now you have a lot of people out there, they don't like to start uh, with the short string. They want to come over here and start on the second cross. And that's fine, you can do that. I actually do that most of the time, to be honest. It's just easier to teach people over here. Uh, so if you start on this side, and this is just me, and the reason I do it the way I do it is so that as I'm stringing the racket, every time I push the string through the grommet, I start under, I string across, and I'll end up over, go back through the grommet, go back, I'll start under, go across, and I'll end up over. And that'll happen all the way up until you get down to your skips. So if you wanted to start on this side for my technique, you do the same thing. But like if over here I started over, over here, you would just start under. And that's how we're going to actually do it today. So I'll start under, we weave across. Make sure you have enough to come in. So now, this one was over, this one's going to be over. So now you'll see, like, if, since we skip two crosses the way I do it, uh, I said start over, so this is starting over. Now, if you want to do a starting knot, because you don't have a starting clamp, you can always come in here and do your starting knot. I do not do starting knots. I always use a starting clamp. It's just kind of personal preference. Okay. Let me get a few things started here. So now you'll notice I'm under. So from here all the way down here, every time I do a string, it's going to start under. And it finished over. If you can see that. And come over here. You know, so I'm pulling on the second one. I didn't pull the first one. If you want to pull the first over here, you can do that. There's no problem in doing that. Uh, I just changed the technique a little bit to where now I just pulled the second one first because I am going to go back and put tension on this first string when I tie the knot. Always, when you're pulling, make sure you weave your string or your fan. You don't want to get burned, friction burned across your string. Under. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk with some details here in a second. One. Make sure we fan. After we finish the top of the rack, and obviously I picked a nice shaped poly string to make this as difficult as possible for this video. We are not tension, so now we have full tension up here. Exclusively. Every once in a while I'll get in a tight spot and you like a pro knot or something. And when you're tying, I know you'll see a lot of these videos, these guys man, they're cranking on these strings. Don't do that, you're just gonna break them. Uh, 
Okay, so now we're here. We pull tension. Tighten that just a little bit. Okay, and pull, and pull. Now, when you're just starting out, try to pull you some string out. If you're just starting out, typically the easiest way to weave is to kind of do a little pull weave like this. You just grab the string, pull it towards you, grab the string, pull it towards you, grab it. And that's really all you're kind of doing. So that's when you're just starting out, that's how I started, you know. And you can develop whatever technique you want to. Uh, you can use your thumbs, use your fingers. I push weave, and part of the reason I push weave, I like the string to stay on my side instead of being opposite of me, because obviously if it's over here, you risk getting the string caught up on everything. Uh, when you push weave, and again, <coughs> It takes practice. I mean, this isn't anything you're going to develop overnight. It takes a lot of practice to learn how to do this and get fairly decent at it. Uh, and you'll notice I always string one ahead, always weave one ahead. Uh, reason for that, if you can tell, I don't know if you can tell, this string is higher than these two strings, okay? And that's the one I want to go under. So obviously if it's a little bit higher than these, then it's a lot easier to get the string under, okay? If you just do the one, that'll just be opposite, and then you have to really go up, down, up, down, up, down, and it's pretty tough. So anyway, when you push weave, really, I mean, you see people with their fingers together, and it looks like they're just grabbing the string and pulling, but what you're doing, so like the top, just push down, bottom one's pushing up, by top down, up, down, up. And that's all you're doing, and you just keep your fingers together. And again, that's why I say it takes practice. Just keep your fingers together, and that's all you're doing. And You'll notice I always hold the end, that way I don't have to search for it after every, uh, Every time I pull a string, again, under. And see if we can show it again. I'm just pushing this one up. See, without that one, you just push it that way. This one, you just push up. You can push it that way, push it up. Push it that way, push it up. Push it that way. And that's all you're doing. And you'll notice here, let me pull this one. this one through here and something to always watch when you're pulling your string is watch your head anything that it can get strung up or hung up on because I've got friction burns all over me from thing hanging on the Diablo or something if you'll notice when I do it and I'm not saying you do it I'm just saying this is my opinion this is how I do it I have a little bit of string sticking out I like it there so I can kind of see the string as I'm moving it a lot of guys, they like to come in here and they'll cover up the whole end so that way they can feel it. I like to be able to kind of see it. So I always have a little tip sticking out there. And again, push, push. Push, push, push. That's all you're doing. Or if you're a pull weave, you're basically doing, and if you pull weave, you'll notice, okay, if you push weave, I'm pushing with the tip. If you pull, it's nice to have a loop. And then you can just pull parts of the loop through there. And obviously this has less tension on it, so that's the part that'll come through. And if you get to a point where it gets a little stiffer, harder to pull. You can just do like I did there and kind of pull a little bit extra. Maybe a little too much. 
and start again. Or you can just pull the whole thing out if you wanted to. So you'll see, and again, I always pull out a loop, that way I have, you know, you'll see some guys that they'll grab it, you know, they're pretty good at it. They just go from here, you know, and they don't pull a loop through. I don't know, for me, I always wanted to have a loop that I could work with. And remember, when you pull tension, hold these up. Let them kind of walk themselves down and they'll walk themselves straight. If you just let them pull, they'll create your little smiley faces. And I will tell you, if you string a lot of 1820 rackets, which for some reason this year I've gotten a whole bunch of 1820 rackets, uh, it's hard to keep these straight. So even though you pull them up here and everything, they have just, we call it the String bed is so dense it'll tend to always try to push them down so you gotta hold them a little firmer and you may have to go back and make little adjustments as you go but you can do it it's not that hard now that's the i know i've seen people come in here and use their thumbs i've never been able to do, do my thumbs if you can do it you know feel free but i can't do my thumbs so but you can do the pull um, if you learn how to push, pull, whatever you do, learn how to do multiple fingers, I typically use my index finger, but there's a lot of times I use this finger on the bottom. Sometimes I use this one on the top, not very often. And that's because, you know, you do enough rackets so after a little while your fingers will get real sore and stiff. this one see all the controls with that finger this one I'm just pushing up pretty much just pushing up this is the one I'm pushing out with but the only way to really learn this you have to do this do it Push or pull, whichever way you're comfortable doing. And you'll notice, and again, like I said, every racket I do, so it's hard for me because sometimes somebody will start a racket and then I'll go back behind them to finish up. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard for me unless it's somebody I've trained and they don't string the same way I do. So they'll have them starting over. And then I'll come over here and pick up the racket and I'll get halfway through it and I'll realize, oh crap, I just missed a little half a racket because they were going over and I was going under. So, and you know, it's that muscle memory thing. So even if they tell me, hey, I'm going over, okay, you're going over, I'll go in here, you know, and I'll go over and I'll get to the other side and bam, I'm going under. Too tight down here on a multi filament, it's not synthetic gut, natural gut, stuff like that. I can usually go all the way to the end and a little push weave, they're a little softer, a little bit more pliable. These poly strings, this next one here is about the last one I can actually push weave it across.
So, after I get to a point where I can't push weave anymore, what we do, we come in here. Okay, so notice, we've come to our skip. So instead of starting under, after you get to your skip, I'm starting over. So what I do on these, I take the little loop, I push the loop in, take my finger, push it up, and just push the tail. So push the loop in, take your finger, push the tail, then I grab it with my finger, that way I'm loaded, ready to go again. And that's all I do, push the loop in, push it up, push it out. Grab it with my finger. I know, uh, I think Richard Parnell, some other people, they use their, they come in here and use their thumb. The reason I don't use my thumb is I like to be able to grab it and I have the control of the string. see over here I'm gonna make sure I don't have a little crossover so it came out underneath I'm gonna go in underneath and a lot of these rackets that I string often it's gonna sound kind of silly but I've kind of got them trained where they'll come out and go under in certain places so again pushing it down push it up tail And I got off here somewhere. I went and I did two of them because I was talking. Trying to go slow and focus. Kind of throws you off. Anytime you, you do enough of this stuff and you try to change anything, it kind of throws you off after a little bit. So again, here's the tie off. You don't want to put the clamp right here because you don't have room to get your string in there to tie your knot. So make sure you leave yourself a little bit of a gap. So come in here. And on this one, I don't know if you ever watch a lot of my videos, I'll stick my finger here to pull this string. And that way the string will hit my finger and just kind of slide off. But you'll notice where the clamp is at, like if you just pull it, it probably won't do it. Every once in a while that thing will come over here and it'll hang up on the clamp. So anyway, I just always stick my finger up there and let it run down my finger. And again, you don't have to come in here and put 40, 50, 60 pounds of pressure. I've probably got maybe 10, maybe. And on this one, all I really do is probably four or five pounds of pressure, just a quick little pull, and then release your clamp. Now I know there's people out there that tell you don't use a setting off all. You don't have to use setting off all. You can use your fingers, you can do whatever. Uh, the crosses should be fairly straight. The only thing that's gonna have a curve to them, I hope you can pick it up, will be your mains. They're going to probably all curve in a little bit, and that's part of the process, you know, I mean, the clamps over here are hitting the string, pulling them over. Uh, there's pressure when you're pushing or pushing them, weaving the strings over, it's going to pull them over. When you pull tension, because it's putting tension on, it's pulling them together. So, a lot of factors causing them to try to bow to the middle. Uh, you can negate some of that as you're stringing by kind of just, you know, pulling them over. But you can use your fingers. I just don't like to. I think they get straighter with the awl and then instead of my finger. I don't know why. You think that. And it's got a oh, hit the camera. Hadn't hit it yet, and I'm hitting it. Anyway, that's probably all it needs. Everything else should be fairly straight. Anyway. You may not get anything out of this video. I know people just interested in the whole stringing process and 
they watch people sit here, you know, and we, and we don't ever tell you how we do it. So I figured I can do a video that actually explain how we do it. You know, you just push that string up, push it up, grab it and push it. Grab it. And just doing a lot of rackets, a little experience. You just learn, you get faster, 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 and your mechanics get a little bit better. But that's all there is to it, to actually string in a racket. So I hope you got something out of this video. You may not have, but I hope you did. Have any questions, feel free to ask.